Hey guys, welcome to Currently Cringing. Hi, Dits. Hey. So before we get into the obvious topic for the week, oh. Taylor and Travis and the rigged Super Bowl, <laughs> I wanted to share two random things. First, I was watching, an, watching a movie and in the movie there was an eclipse. It was an Indian movie. And they were like, don't go out during the eclipse. It's really bad luck, really bad vibes in Hinduism. And do you remember, I think, was it 2019 or 2018? Everyone got those glasses to see the... I think it was summer of 2017. I just finished okay. grad school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so summer of 2017. And everyone went out to see the eclipse, including me. And that was... The year I moved back home from New York, I was newly single and I didn't have the glasses, so I probably damaged my eyes, but I ran out to see that eclipse. I remember it like it was yesterday. I even posted it on my main feed and I was told by my mom and then neighbor and architect and astrologer who's also on season one of Family Karma Lourdes she came over and she was like, do not look at that eclipse. You know, she's into Hinduism as well. And of course, what did I do? I looked at the eclipse. And for the next six years, my life was worse than it has ever been. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And I was watching this movie with my husband this past weekend. And they happened to be out during the eclipse, this Bollywood movie. And they were like, go back inside. And I just wanted to share that with you and the listeners. Some of these, I guess, superstitions, old wives' tales, as brown people, we have many of them in our culture to the point where you can't even function properly, but maybe there is some truth to them. Yeah, I remember that eclipse pretty well. Uh, I remember we made like glasses out of the cereal boxes, like you can kind of like cut holes or whatever. And I remember I was with NKP actually, I remember this quite well. And uh, I don't really th take stock in all this weird astrology or whatever stuff that you do, but hey, if you're into it, that's that's cool too. <laughs> and then the second thing that I wanted to share is before I left New York, a few months before this eclipse, I went to go do a coffee reading, which is where they keep the coffee grinds and then you drink the coffee and at the bottom of the cup, there's like a pattern and some people can read signs in these patterns Dits is looking at me like you're off your rocker but it's okay <laughs> so this man said you're gonna lose everything you're gonna be single and you're going to need your family and whether he manifested that for me or not i don't know but shortly after i did quit my job i moved back home and i was single miserable broke and i needed my family more than ever and so, yeah, and then I actually did a copy reading because guess what? Didn't learn my lesson. Did a copy reading at my impromptu bachelorette party, the Turkey Girls trip. We all did a copy reading there. And she told me at the end of the reading, she's like, you're going to have a big party. And the week after was my wedding. So. Wow. Know that. And she didn't look you up? <laughs> she didn't know anything. She didn't even speak English, you know? She's like, this was a village, like Cappadocia. You're in a village, you know? And she read everybody's coffee reading, and we were all, like, sharing here and there. She also said my friend Tina, who was seeing someone at the time, would get married, and she did end up marrying that man, who's now her husband, so. Love that. Yeah. Thanks Please. for sharing. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, because I just thought that was interesting and I, I never shared it on this podcast. So there's a big eclipse coming up, solar eclipse coming up April 8th. So stay the fuck inside. That's my advice. Aren't we out of retrograde now? We are like, out I, of retrograde, I, but there's four a year. Oh my God. There's three more. And like I mentioned in the previous podcast, Pluto in Aquarius happened this month, Chinese New Year. A lot of crazy shit's happening astrologically but i wanted to share my opinion and we me and you talked about this it's crazy that the same teams who were in the super bowl in 2020 the same presidential candidates and yeah. then it happened so the same the same team the same team won as well crazy what's your take 
Um, I think that like so it was weird when I saw the betting lines at the beginning of the game. Uh, San Francisco was favored, which was a little surprising to me, um, but not by much. And then they, to be fair, they played very well. The first half was awful. Like one of the most boring games. I, was, I don't even think I watched the first quarter. Uh, I was just chatting at the party I was at. And then the second half was really fun. But San Francisco was playing better and better and better. But Taylor Swift did her thing. Black magic. And the Chiefs rallied back. And I thought Kelsey was going to catch like the game-winning touchdown at the end of the game. That almost happened. Um, but it just set up for the overtime, which was also fun. And the best part was that whether you were a casual fan or a hardcore fan or anywhere in between, nobody knew the rules in overtime, including, I think, the coaches. And we're like, what, what's going on now? <laughs> it's crazy. I, Me and my husband, I concur. We were bored as hell. And we were on our phones just like, you know, looking at memes, Super Bowl memes, whatnot. We were bored. And then out of nowhere, you know, the game started picking up. And the overtime... My husband, Serge, explained to me that before it kind of wasn't fair. It was like one only one team got to choose something. Yeah, but what happened is I think like strategically, like San Francisco won the toss and they picked they picked the wrong one. So I was listening to analysis saying that if you want a coin toss where both teams get the ball, they should have picked second because Kansas City actually had an uh, advantage because they knew how many points they needed to score versus when you go first. Yeah. So for those of us, me included, and the listeners who don't know what's happening, what was the old rule and what is the new rule? So it used to be that if you're tied, uh, it was it used to be first team who scores anything wins, like field goal, touchdown, doesn't matter. Then the rule became both team. if you score a field goal, the other team gets a chance to come back. The new rule was basically both teams get the ball no matter what. So even if you score a touchdown, the other team can come back and score. So under that rule, what the pundits are saying is that you should go, you should always want to go second because essentially if you go first, you're playing for points. You don't know a touchdown, a field goal. Whereas once the Chiefs got the ball second, they literally knew that they had to have four downs to get a first down no matter what. And then they, a field goal ties the game, touchdown wins the game. They knew what they were doing. Whereas if you get the ball first, you know, fourth down, you're not going for it, right? You're, you have to, you could punt the ball. You, there's so many things. So basically the... I think there's another theory. San Francisco, the coach, he got tailored. Like the black magic, she she put her witchcraft out there to perplex him, and he made the wrong choice on the coin toss. That's the theory. That could be a theory, but wouldn't you think that these teams have discussed all the possible <laughs> plays and strategies with their coach? Like the teams have discuss this and that you would go with second like this is common knowledge or is this rigged yeah that's the thing it's like maybe it's rigged but i like the black magic theory i think that she's sitting there in the press box with blake lively and Brittany ice spice. i don't even know who ice spice I know. is <laughs> uh, only a few of us millennials know who ice spice is she's uh she's the one who's rapping in the N Nicki minaj barbie song and she has a lot of good oh uh, okay yeah. pop peppy songs right now which i personally like so i know my husband likes ice spice as well and every time they just panned we were like did ice spice sign with the illuminati as well like how did she get in there i i think the best part of the super bowl was afterwards talking with my parents my mom is not a football fan she goes oh yeah i wanted to see taylor swift was on tv blah 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 and then my dad at the end, we were having dinner last night. And he's like, so what, what's the deal with uh, with Taylor Swift's boyfriend? What's his name? Uh, Travis McGee? <laughs> I just lost it. And he's like, why was he yelling and pushing his coach? And I was like, dad, I actually don't have an answer to that. <laughs> it was the most watched Super Bowl since the moon landing. I know. Well, we're, we expected that. That was, yeah. I mean, and the thing is, this is good. This is good for football. Like they got a whole new fan base. Uh, many generations. Everyone was watching. Well, me, I was watching also because of Taylor and all of that stuff. You know, otherwise it's always on and I'm not watching. I was actually watching the game. Yeah. I knew what was happening, you know. Did uh did your husband get off work? Yeah, he was not on call that weekend. So we actually had a good fun game weekend and we were excited, but I don't know. I just think the comeback was just a little suspect. And can we talk about 
Travis pushing the elderly, <laughs> the coach? Is that the coach? Yeah, that's the coach, the team coach. He's a 65-year-old man. He's a gentle, giant walrus, whatever you want to call him, Andy Reid. He's been in the league for a long time. And my dad was outraged. Our friend NKP was posting about it on Instagram. <laughs> well, Neil, Neil NKP was like, not one female has mentioned this in any of the group chats, including me. And I was like, because it's expected. Like, I wasn't surprised to see that. I'm sorry. My expectations are not high for someone like Travis Kelsey. Read the room. These are walking rage machines. Not all of them. There might be one or two here that, you know, they, they might be teddy bears. This is football. This is what they do. This is happening on the field and off the field. Him pushing him, I mean, it was a little intense because being pushed by Travis Kelsey is like probably being bulldozed, you know, literally. And I don't know. I feel like that's part of the game. It's part of that environment, part of the nature of the beast. So, so I missed it. Um, I must have been like getting food or in the bathroom or something. And I, I only saw a replay of him yelling. I didn't see the push. And I was like, okay, people can yell. It's, you know, teammates, whatever, coach, you can yell at each other. The push was a little weird. And I think I saw the memes come out during the game that you were sending me. And I was like, oh, wow. And everyone, our friends, some of them were outraged. And then, yeah, it was, it was, fun. it was something. There's something for everyone. <laughs> I think that meme is now the new meme for the finance bro yelling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like taken over now it's travis kelsey and a lot of people were like oh my god like taylor it puts taylor in a bad light i'm like taylor's fucking fine yeah <laughs> she did end up using her jet she came from japan yeah i mean that was the most obvious thing ever i mean i can't believe people thought she wouldn't she's probably gonna make the parade which is on wednesday in kansas city and she can still make it back to australia for her saturday or friday concert like it's fine now, you think the relationship is real. I think it's fake. Um, they, I don't think you can really fake that level of kind of adoration. And also, like, I don't know if you were following, like, Twitter and Barstool and everything after where they were showing the partying in Vegas. Like, they were out together all night, like, yeah. um, at Zook nightclub. They were at Excess. And they were out till 5.30. They were, like, dancing to all her songs. And they were, like, pointing at each other. I thought... It's, I mean, if they're acting, they're the most incredible actors on the planet. I mean, they're both hot, so there's no problem in making out like you, like, in the past, if you're single, like, you'll make out with a hot girl. Yeah, but there's making out, and there's kind of, like, them being all over each other, like, looking deeply into these, each other's eyes. Like, I don't think it's any different than, like, our boomer parents, like, arranged marriages. Like, they don't really, they didn't know each other, and they, like, made themselves love each other, because they're like, oh, this is better than nothing, Right in arranged marriage so maybe this is an arranged corporate relationship that's blossoming yeah it's like i think if you spend enough time with anyone especially if there's like sex and romance and all this stuff like you you know you tend to you know have feelings and affection for each other and it just grows and especially because they're both excelling in their fields obviously you know she is the best in her field and he is you know not the best but he's up there and he's he won a championship in his field you know so she wears the pants. She's the main one. And he's not some schlub. He's doing, he's getting it done. I just think they both were probably set up by corporations or their big <laughs> talent agencies. And he wanted mainstream fame. Mm -hmm. And she wanted world domination. And this is a new demo. And then the NFL is getting so much money from this. I mean, they already make billions of dollars. Now they're at another level and they've just created a lot of money for a lot of people, including themselves by being mm -hmm. together, which is why I think they will get married. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I look, I don't care if it's real or not. I think I could see the, whether it's arranged, real, I just feel like they're compatible, which is the most important thing in our millennial culture if you want to say you know with our with our parents i think it was compatibility but also like do the parents approve right they have a similar all-american background yeah he's from nashville right or something um yeah and i think like the family seem to get along so why not 
And I don't think she wants someone who's a megastar, right? Like whatever she dated, like the Tom Hiddleston types or whatever, the big name, he it's it's like he was a nobody. Uh he was just a nobody if you're not a sports fan, but he does well enough in his field. It's not like she's dating like a Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady type. But do you see how Patrick Mahomes isn't as loud, yet he is the star? Yeah. I mean, he's not loud because he sounds like Kermit the Frog. Everyone's seen that meme going around. And uh, he's, I think his wife also has him on a bit of a leash. If you watch that Netflix quarterback show. We um, did. She has a lot of say in what's going on. <laughs> his whole like media persona, I think, is like something that she's been working on. So, yeah. I think she's doing a great job because he comes across to mainstream women like me, like as really classy and a gentleman mm -hmm. but when i see travis kelsey whether or not he's with taylor there's something crass about him like when he did the viva las vegas like i was cringing is it him or is it his brother <laughs> i mean the brother's just kind of there <laughs> like a hillbilly looking guy taking his shirt off and screaming and drinking yeah but Taylor was Taylor was drinking some beers in the Jumbotron. I saw that. Do you think they will achieve a three-peat because of Taylor's black magic? I think anything is possible at this point. We haven't seen a three-peat, I think, ever in the Super Bowl era. But if there's if they're gonna do it, it's Taylor Swift and Mahomes and yeah. I'm uh you know, I think everyone's ready for next football season. Like it's like even the casuals are like, hey, even me, you? women. <laughs> You're ready We're for ready. August and September training camp. Let's go. We're ready. I do like that they're, I do like the way uh, Travis Kelsey dresses. I know he's outlandish and I mm -hmm. enjoy his fashion. Yeah. I think it's always good when sports and certain characters become like more mainstream, like kind of was like, you know, it was like Michael Jordan for us growing up and now like Steph Curry. So, yeah. And then this is a trigger for you with <laughs> TikTok. A lot of people don't know the Timu ads, Timu ads. That is like the Amazon of TikTok. It's owned by TikTok. And the amount of money they spent on Super Bowl ads, they said like people went and signed up and they're, they've got so many credit cards now because of those Super Bowl ads. And people don't realize this is TikTok just gathering your information. Yeah, I mean... Why is this a surprise? I've been anti TikTok for a while and you guys are just obsessed with it. <laughs> I am obsessed. I'm addicted. I love it. And they can have my info. But I don't think people realize the agenda here, which I'm I'm more concerned about your brain. It's just like I know you're like your brain is frying. Please stop. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the halftime show. This is Oh no. I loved it. Uh, did you like the halftime show? Oh, it was fantastic. It was great. I think the show itself was phenomenal. It's the aftermath that's kind of an oh no moment. <laughs> yeah, I thought Usher, Lil Jon, Ludacris, Alicia Keys, like iconic. What more do you want? Millennial nostalgia. And so, of course, I made a reel. I <laughs> during made... the you made a reel during the Super Bowl. I made a reel during the Super Bowl. The amount of Gen yeah, this is one of those weird times where Gen Z has been quiet or kind of agreeing with us. Weird, weird allies right now. Weird allies. Gen Z is aligned with us. Gen X has lost their mind. First of all, I didn't know that many Gen Xers. And by the way, no one knows who they are. These are the these are the people in between millennials and boomers. I mean, I made a chart just now. Um, if you were born 1965 to 1980, you're Gen X. 81 to 96 is Gen Y or millennial and 97 to 2012 is Gen Z. So I actually made a chart of all the albums and everything when it all came out. Um, I'm sorry, you had, a, you had a point. You can continue. No, no, no. I want you to go with your chart. So basically you and I were agreeing that millennial culture, it's, it's more for us because I think Peak Usher was his second album which was Confessions. That's the one where Yeah came out. And we were all at middle school dances. We were at house parties, driving around in our cars, our first licenses, everything like that, listening to the stuff in between classes. So we were ages 8 to 24 when that came out. 
which in my mind is like, that's who listens to music, right? We're the kiddies. And what I was saying is that when Confessions came out, Gen X was 24 to 41. And they've been arguing like, oh, you know, you guys were in diapers while we were at the club. So I was like, first of all, we weren't in diapers. Even if you were to argue his first album, the big one, My Way, we were all born, right? We were all one, like one to 16. And they were, and some of them were like, oh, when he was first came out, we were in college. Okay. But like, he didn't make it big till 04, his second album, 08, 2010. Like I'd say 04 to 2010 was like peak Usher. And so that was my argument. And people just lost their minds. And I, I got a lot of love, but also a lot of flack. I just don't think people understood the video. Like, I wasn't saying that Usher's Gen X, first of all, it's crystal clear his millennial music, he, cre he made millennial music. That is clear. There's, there's a few arguments. The first is people saying that because he's a certain age that is Gen X, he is Gen X, right? And I just like disagree on that. I think it's, who listened to your music, right? And they're saying, their argument uh, is that they were around and of listening age, the 17 to 34 age, which is important, when he first came out, right? And okay, and they're like, we paved the way. But I think that like, we were listening during his best years and we were like bopping around and yeah, we weren't at the nightclub, but we were all having our first beers, our first kiss, whatever. Like we were doing all that stuff in high school and junior high. And, so, and the eldest of us were in college. And so that run of hearing confessions and everything around that, I think that is what makes it more millennial. Agree. And people have lost their minds. And you should read the comments on this reel. People are really enraged. And I just think it's terrifying because it's a peek into election season. Like if people are outraged over an Usher video and an opinion about millennial music what's going to happen when it's time to vote <laughs> i can't wait also just like gen x seems to think that we're a lot younger than we are that's the first takeaway and the second is like for me music and nostalgia are very linked right and what is the most nostalgic period of your life like yes we all joke about how four years ago was fun and our 20s was fun the single most nostalgic period of anyone's life in any generation any era is your school years right your grade school, elementary, high school, junior high, whatever you want to call it, and into college, you know, maybe the first couple of years of college. And they're like, well, you know, you were listening to these songs, you know, when you were like in diapers, whatever. And we were at the club. I'm like, I liked the club. The club is not like the best time of my life, right? Like, that's not my nostalgia. Like, sure, the club is fine. My 20s, bar hopping club, good times. But that's because it was like an escape from our crappy cubicle nine to five life that we do until we die right no one looks back and says oh our 20s man those were the best right they're good they're better than our 30s but you know what was fun was like sneaking around house parties first kiss yeah you know the the weird music when we're driving around and you know home by curfew sleepovers your first taste of freedom yeah like who doesn't love junior high and high school i mean like yeah high school probably was like obviously awkward time but like you know, you still think and look look fondly back on that, you know? Like, Absolutely. the problem was terrible, but you still look back fondly on that period. Yeah, and everyone was just innocent, and life was simple, and you had to do homework. But, like, we were listening to Usher, and that was the point. And then I, I came up with a second point, which was also pissing people off. And I said, Usher is ours. And I said, I'll give Taylor Swift to Gen Z. Which I'm willing to actually debate that one because I think you and I are biased because we're older millennials. Yes. Whereas our younger siblings, they're younger and like they, when Taylor Swift started, were like, you know, at least in, you know, maybe somewhere in high school, a lot more in college. But my argument is that like Gen Z, they were all kind of born around the time Taylor Swift started, right? Love story. Um, and, you know, maybe they were like five, six, whatever. But in my opinion, peak Taylor in terms of pop music and the radio was 2014, her album 1989, which we talked about a lot. And that was their ages 8 to 17, right? That was all right before they went up to college, grade school, junior high. And they're the ones driving around blasting Taylor Swift. And we were the 1844 during that time, which was fun, right? Some of us were in college. And I think the younger millennials can claim Taylor. 
But for us, I remember like listening to Taylor Swift on my iPod, like on the way to work on the subway, being like, okay, this is cool, but I, I want to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, like I think her earlier stuff also sounded more like kids bop. Mm-hmm. And now it's matured. And maybe now we like it more like I like it more. And I'm actually looking forward to her new album drop. And we'll see. I think it's just like you said, Taylor Swift herself is a millennial but her listeners are predominantly Gen Z, just like his Gen X and his listeners are millennials. And it's funny because I've always I've been kind of like fighting with Gen Z for, you know, for years. It's kind of like my, my mentality. I'm aligned with them on music, I think. I'm like, you guys can get this. Give us this. And Gen X is not happy about our musical discrimination or their segregation, the way we're doing it. <laughs> they, they've lost their minds is what they're showing. us. That's all. They're like. They've lost their minds, but. You recently became an uncle. Uh, Yeah, that's right. And you're an older sibling. And I wanted to talk about this briefly. I'm an older sibling as well. Life has just been harder for the older sibling. Like, I'm just going to do like an older sibling appreciation post. Because I think a lot of why I still don't know if I want kids or anything is because I'm an older sibling. Because it's just been a lot of work, a lot of responsibility. But your case was different because you are a boy and your sister's a girl and you went to boarding school. Yeah. Um, So we're four years apart and I went to boarding school. She stayed in New York in the city. But she also got married in 2020, right before the pandemic, luckily. And I'm still not married and she just had her first kid. So it's like, yes, I'm older, but she's gone through a completely different state of life compared to me. And is probably older now just in life experience Mm -hmm. than me and you because of all those things. Now, despite all of that, would you say the responsibility of the family, the household, the family unit, falls on your shoulders as it does on mine yeah but that might be also a boy thing versus a girl Well, i'm a girl i'm the oldest yeah i think brother's too young he's 28 that's right so i think for me as the older sibling and a brother uh a lot of responsibility goes on me you know like i often will be the one to you know fly to india you know if my grandma needs me or if she's sick you know a lot of times luckily she's here a lot of the year but you know in the past I've, i've done that and i do that happily but you know i think it is expected, especially of an older sibling and an older brother. Uh, I'm not sure how it works with the older if you're a if you're a girl, but you would know that. I think it's very similar. They always say, you know, that meme, the oldest daughter in an immigrant home is the strongest man. (laughs) I just think you have a lot of responsibility. Like I was taking my brother and my sister to school. I had my own Mm. car, granted, but I was taking them to school i was picking them up you know from and you were and you were listening to usher while you were doing that and i was listening to usher and then as you get older maybe now i put myself first i'm learning to do that because you are constantly thinking about your family and your siblings because Mm. that's how we were trained or formed or raised you know you you were taking care of everyone yeah um it's it's definitely it's also i think the sibling mentality we kind of got a lot of sh- of like the bad shit from our parents and yeah. the siblings got less and i remember like i would get in this trouble for certain things and my sister would do the same things and get it, the, the anger and the punishment would be much less same <laughs> like i remember getting in trouble for stuff and my sister would be doing the same thing, like let's say alcohol, and she was much younger and her penalty was like nothing. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Not okay. It's still happening. I feel like even just things that happen now, my parents are harsher on me than my sibling. Yeah. Like you got so much shit for being single. Yeah. Like constantly abused. I don't think either of your siblings gets any of that. None. Like, and your sister is now, I think, your age when, sure. before you were, before you yeah, were married. she's older than, you know, she's 36, so mm-hmm. she's older than when I was, when I was getting verbally abused every day by my parents. Yeah, what, I mean, not that I'm saying she should be verbally abused, because exactly. she's great, 
We don't but, want that. But why did you? I also think, you know, I was living with my parents, so it was easy access to get yelled at, whereas <laughs> my siblings live all the way in LA. You know, they're, that's very far from Miami. And I also think the sibling that lives closest to the parents gets most shit. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I lived abroad for a couple for th three years, and to be fair, I'm not sure what level of yelling my sister got because she was closer to them in the city. Um, but I do feel like those were relatively stress free years. But now I'm I'm in year ten now of being in New York um, consecutively, so I've been very much around my parents, and I do feel like sometimes uh, more expected of them. <laughs> more is expected of you, absolutely. But we're not complaining. We just wanted to tell you guys out there that if you're an older sibling and you're just stressed on top of everything else going on in your life that you're not alone it's all of us and we're all in this together what about i mean the fact there's you know two when there's just two of you but when there's three siblings what's the dichotomy of that so i think that when there's three siblings it's very different depending on the sexes i know now we're like living in a non-binary world but at the end of the day my sister and me are three years apart and then my younger brother and me are 11 years apart and I've read some books where if that's the situation then if you're the first son after a while then you're you operate as an older sibling as an older child mm -hmm. as well and so I I must say me and my brother actually have a lot in common in that we are very independent my brother is probably more independent than me. And he takes care of himself. He's never needed my parents for anything. He left home the American way for college at 18 and hasn't lived at home since and hasn't lived in the same state since. So he's very independent. And I remember he was pre-med. He was pre-med at UCLA and finished and realized he enjoyed sports more than medicine. And my parents were devastated, but. Ah, oh, good for your brother, by the way. I kind of want his job. So super jealous. <laughs> and you know how tough that is, right? When your parents want you to go in a certain direction and you don't. And just like me getting married, my parents, you know, probably were on him every day to go be a doctor. And he did it. But then he realized this isn't for me because he has a brain. And ultimately, you're successful when you're doing what you love. I do believe that. And my brother has such a passion for sports and such a deep knowledge. It's like, you can talk to him about any sport. Mm -hmm. He knows everything and he loves his job. So my parents, I remember this like it was yesterday. They were like, he won't find a job. He's a biology major. No mm -hmm. one's going to hire him. The next week, this boy had a job with ESPN. Damn. Good for him. What everyone a, what... was shook. What so he's a mover, mover. I think he operates like an older sibling. He's a mover and a shaker. Damn. Uh, well, props to your brother. And although I feel like your parents do yell at him sometimes, but <laughs> they yell at him about random things, which I won't get into because that's his story and his life. But it's nothing about getting married, obviously, because he's 28 and nothing about work either. It's just other stuff like but you and me, we're all everyone's getting yelled at, guys. It doesn't end. <laughs> boomer, boomer abuse, especially in immigrant families. Yeah, but yeah, just and then oh, and then I wanted to get into this before we wrap up. I don't know if a lot of you know who Tucker Carlson is, but he's red. He's <laughs> super right wing. He was on Fox News. He got fired from Fox News, had some issues with Rupert Murdoch and some text messages that leaked and. He was apparently against Trump the entire time. Anyways, this man was fired and joined Elon Musk's ex for a large sum of money. And basically, he has a channel there and he talks about, you know, he has like a talk show and he goes and interviews people. So this man flew to Russia and interviewed President Putin. And I think the significance of this was we learned that Putin has not had any conversation or interaction with President Biden since President Biden went into office, which is concerning. That is and, wild. <laughs> yeah, that's wild and concerning. And number two, 
Putin said that the election of 2016 was kind of rigged and they love Trump for obvious reasons and were probably part of that. And then he went into the war of, of Ukraine and how there's a reason they're in Ukraine and all of this nonsense. But anyways, my point is, in America, a man can just go to Moscow and interview the president of Russia. And just the way Putin spoke, not going to lie, Biden is kind of embarrassing. I hate to say that. Like, it, you just see how these other presidents, yeah. other countries carry themselves and talk and communicate. And you're like, what are we doing here? Well, and I think we're both we're both like nonpartisan. And it's like, why are these the choices? We didn't like the choices four years ago. And here we are again with the same choices, but worse, you know? We're in Jumanji. <laughs> I don't know what portal we're in. I, I want to get out of it. And yeah. I just wanted to mention that because it's super random. And I did watch the full two, two and a half hours. And you're just like, wow, like he just sounds smart. And obviously he is smart, President Putin. But it just makes you wonder, like, what's going on in our own country? Yeah. They're fighting with, about Usher. That's what's happening. Well, at least they're fighting about this and not world geopolitics. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm happy to debate people in your comment section about music all day. Yeah. I also saw there's like the biggest snowstorm coming to New York. It's fine. Again, like when we were younger, we used to go to school in much worse and they they closed the schools today. But it wasn't even a real snow day because they have Zoom classes now, which is terrible. It's like I'd rather go to school in the snow yeah. than sit at home on Zoom. That's terrible. Yeah, I don't um, know how kids are doing it these days. I could not learn just even when there was an option for online classes sometimes, like back when we were in college, like I would never take them. No, I don't think you learn anything. Agree. Uh, do you have any fun plans coming up? No, my husband's traveling for work and he's on call for the next three weekends. So. Oh, no. Which is fine. Including, I guess, as you know, or I, ju I just told you, W2 long weekend coming up. W2 long weekend President's Day. Yeah, I asked it's what the holiday was because i'm i'm not w2 i'm 1099 i work for myself so i never know what the holidays are because every day is the same so apparently it's president's day so i hope everyone has a lovely president's day and we didn't even touch valentine's day so my husband is traveling on valentine's day however he already got me my nice little valentine's day gift he actually gave me a a nice gift for chinese new year as well which I'll, <laughs> show dits, I'll show dits on on the screen sweetheart surge oh wow that's the yeah. nicest gift i've ever seen exactly so i got my chinese new year gift and i have my valentine's day gift what are your plans the plan is uh dinner and then drinks nothing crazy because it's midweek right uh my, my girlfriend basically had a work drinks that was a happy hour so i didn't book anything and then by the time she's like, oh, it's just a drink. So there's no dinner. Let's do Valentine's. Uh, most of the stuff in New York is just booked up. So pro tip for Valentine's Day, if you can't find your usual spot, pick an Asian restaurant because they're all available. So I found a Thai place near me and they are very much have availability. No prefix bullshit. And you don't want that prefix bullshit, right? It's so cheesy and the food's not yeah. even good. It's just that's the last thing I would want to do on Valentine's Day. Yeah. So that's the plan in terms of the night itself. And then um, long weekend, we're going to go to Vermont, just do like a winter house type thing with her friends. And then for her present, we're going to Cabo. It's expensive. And if you're alone on Valentine's Day, just it costs zero dollars. Put it that way. Enjoy your There's no plans. You can do whatever you want. And it's actually a really good day on the dating apps. I feel like right like today, like, you know, if it's, the 12th, the 13th, whatever, just crush it. And then even after Valentine's, it's like, boom, let's go. Guess what day I downloaded Hinge and started talking to my now husband? Valentine's? February 14th. Wow. Me 21. So what's your actual anniversary then? It's the day we don't sell, do those things though. But okay, so <laughs> I know I'm like, uh, we don't do that. We started talking February 14th, 2021. I remember it clear as day. It was a Sunday. 
And I was not sad it was Valentine's Day and I was single. In fact, I had forgotten it was Valentine's Day because we had been in the pandemic and, you know, we're just every day was just the same. And you're just like living this like weird life. And I was in my parents' house. So my mom had given me flowers. I remember that day because I told you that, oh, I'm dating this amazing girl and I feel like she's going to be the one. And I texted you, you're next. Yeah. With a photo of us. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, that day I was texting my now husband on Hinge and we were on Hinge briefly because I was really looking for someone serious. And I said, hey, this is my number. I prefer text. Like, I don't like talking on the dating app. Do you? Like, I prefer phone convo, like on text. Ooh, smart. I like it. Like, do you want to sit and chat on the Hinge app? Like, I don't. I mean, I think it's okay. It's just you need to, the combo needs to keep going. I'm not against chatting if like you're both back and forth. My problem is you'll have a convo and then you have to wait like a day and then someone's doing something. And like you basically have like a back and forth over like two weeks and it's like there's no rhythm, you know? Yeah. Like it's it's like when you're texting with someone, you can at least have a back and forth because, you know, we're all on our phones, right? Unless you're like in a meeting like, dude, after 7 p.m., unless you're like at a dinner with friends, even if you're with friends, unless with your parents, you're on your phone. OK, we all do it. So you're. The, with Hinge and the dating apps is, bu- is bullshit because if someone's not responding to you, it's because they're responding to someone else. I've said it. <laughs> and you're right. So we were just chatting through text briefly, and it was the first time we were texting, just getting to know each other. And you were seeing this girl, and I was mad because you had broken up with a girl and then you had moved on with this girl and I (laughs) took it as you're throwing it in my face like I'm single and you have someone and you were (laughs) like you sent me a picture of you and the girl and you were like you're next like and I felt like you were throwing it in my face and then I was next yeah And the funny thing is I wasn't next or even close to next. This was three years ago. So we always joke about that now when we say you're next. (laughs) It's so true. Like you're next. And then I was next. And I cried all evening because I was mad at you that you threw that in my face because I was at rock bottom. I had been rejected so many times. And I wasn't really worried about Valentine's Day. I was just like, will I ever meet someone? And then you sent me that photo, which is, by the way, still a great photo to this day of you and that girl. Uh, and and you were like, you're next. And I remember everyone in the group chat was like, Dits, you're an asshole. I didn't mean it that way. I was trying to be like motivational, right? Um, and it's funny how time works. That was three years ago. And I had a feeling that you were next. And I thought, I was first, but in reality, you were next, and I was, I had a ways to go. (laughs) That's a funny story. And so, yeah, if you're single and you're bored, and maybe it's the right time to swipe on free day. I think so. I think it's a good week. Um, And then you have obviously, like, you know, cuffing, uncuffing season is not very far away. That's always fun. Yeah. And then we have another hot girl summer coming, right? It's not that far. Can't wait. Do you think there, there's going to be another pandemic or another lockdown or something? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I forgot because of the last time we had the Super Bowl and this election. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you and I bring back the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dips. All right. Bye.